Hi, everybody. Tonight I'm here with Bob Lehman, the president of the AOA, and Jackie Bowen, a trustee of the AOA, to talk about the latest news regarding Hubble Contacts and the AOA. Now, Dr. Lehman is a graduate of the Ohio State University College of Optometry, where he was named one of the school's top 100 notable alumni. Dr. Lehman is a diplomat of the American Board of Optometry. He was elected to the Office of President during the 124th Annual AOA Congress in June 2021. Prior to his election to the AOA Board, Dr. Lehman has volunteered 30 more and more years of consecutive AOA service. In 2006, he was honored with the AOA Optometrist of the Year Award. He's been awarded Ohio Optometrist of the Year, along with several other state honors, including serving as past president of the Ohio Optometric Association. Dr. Lehman is owner of Pinnacle Eye Group in Lambertville, Michigan, and Great Lakes Vision Care in Monroe, Michigan, and lives with his wife, Barb, in Toledo, Ohio. They have four grown children. Jackie Bowen is a graduate of Southern California College of Optometry. She's a fellow of the American Academy of Optometry and a diplomat of the American Board of Optometry. She was initially elected to the American Optometric Association Board of Trustees at the 119th Annual AOA Congress and 46th Annual AOSA Conference in July of 2016. Dr. Bowen is a past president of the Colorado Optometric Association, a legislative key person to Colorado, and has a long list of appointments and duties inside and outside of her role as trustee. She was awarded the Colorado Young Optometrist of the Year Award in 2000 and Colorado Optometrist of the Year in 2012. Dr. Bowen has been in private practice in Greeley, Colorado for 28 years. Now, first of all, Bob and Jackie, huge thank you to the AOA and all those involved in this enormous effort. And the effort to expose these unethical practices has been an ongoing effort for over 20 years, ever since my early days in practice. It seems like we finally have some precedents set for future battles. Now, what, what has happened for, the, for the, our viewers is that Hubble Contact faces a record $3.5 million penalty and strict requirements to settle a federal complaint that it deceived customers and flouted consumer protections, validating years of relentless patient and public health advocacy by the AOA in Washington, D.C. On January 28th, the Department of Justice and Federal Trade Commission announced the government collected $1.5 million in civil penalties, $2 million in consumer redress, and subject the online contact lens seller Vision Path doing business as Hubble to ongoing compliance monitoring and a full range of operating restrictions as part of a settlement to resolve allegations the company repeatedly violated the Fairness to Contact Lens Consumers Act, FCLCA that is, the Contact Lens Rule and the FTC Act. The result reflects a sustained years-long effort by the AOA, state affiliates and member doctors nationwide to gather and report on patient health and safety threats posed by unscrupulous contact lens sellers. So there's going to be a lot of questions uh, for Bob and Jackie. So we're going to start with Bob. Uh, and one of the questions that I wanted to ask you, Bob, is that most doctors know that these companies are bad actors and they broke several laws, including RICO statutes. But can, but can you explain exactly what Hubble was doing and how they broke the law? Well, initially they were doing what many doctors witnessed, which was uh, selling contact lenses online without verifying the proper prescription. They substituted their own brand name of lenses to those that were originally prescribed by doctors. And they misled the public, said that they were getting independent consumer reviews when in reality, the company was compensating favorable reviews and included reviews that were written by people with direct connections to the company. That was something, the result the was review, just, we finally got caught doing it. <laughs> the review aspect was something that was new to me. I hadn't heard about that and even known about that. Was that something that was widely known? I don't think it was widely known, but it, it, we uncovered this as part of our evaluation and trying to get FTC's attention uh, about these violations that were coming in from doctors that were reporting bad side effects from the patients wearing these lenses. Well, Jackie, can you tell us a little bit about how the AOA became aware of problems with Hubble's business practices? Sure, well, Hubble entered the marketplace back in 2016, and it sure didn't take long for um, practicing doctors to realize that there was a problem. Um, so shortly after that, the AOA began hearing concerns from doctors 
um, regarding these contact lenses and their business practices. Most of us know what, what we're talking about, the garbled robocall messages that you couldn't understand anything. Um, not only were they substituting contact lens brands, but they were taking toric prescriptions and dispensing equivalent spheres. So they were altering the prescription itself significantly. And um, some messages would give you a phone number that you can call if you have questions. And when you call that number, you get an answering machine that would say, um, please, um, we'll get back to you. Please leave a message, we'll get back to you in two to three business days. Well, that far exceeds the eight hour window that we know we have for verification. So doctors um, took notice and, and made those reports right away. Uh, thank you, Bob. When did the AOA first raise concerns with government agencies related to Hubble's business practices? Well, very early on, they went into business in November of 2016, and right, it, right after they started, we got word of doctors noticing difficulty with patients wearing these lenses and complaints from doctors to our AOA resources saying there was a, a bad player in the marketplace. We met in December of 2016 with then chair of the FTC, Edith Ramirez, and she had no interest in uh, the compliance issue of these companies following the rule of the FCLCA. She was more interested in all the paperwork burdens for doctors to make sure that we had a signed acknowledgement that each patient received their contact lens prescription from their doctor. She completely blew us off, basically. So from 2017 on, we were gathering complaints from doctors, going to the FTC, we finally reached out to the Department of Justice and Federal Trade Commission together to ask them to launch an investigation into Hubble. We even also reviewed this with the Postal Inspection Service because they're mailing them, breaking the law that way. So early on, we got the uh, ball rolling, but it's a long game. It's a marathon with federal agencies. And we kind of felt like we're working uphill because the FTC really gave us the cold shoulder all the time. They, they put the onus on the doctor to, to make sure things were going smoothly. It's like asking, a, giving a child a huge bag of candy and just say, just stop when you've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> you know? what, what, Jackie, what kind of data and information did the AOA provide to the FTC regarding Hubble's business practices? So the AOA provided the FTC with dozens of doctor reports regarding the contact lens rule violations. We provided specific doctor reports of adverse events that our patients experienced from um, wearing these contact lenses that were not ever prescribed for them. Um, for years, we've been concerned with the indecipherable robocalls, the verification calls initiated by Hubble. So we provided several recordings of the verification calls that we did not feel like we could understand and um, had the opportunity to, um, to show that you know, to some lawmakers. Regarding the call to action from Congress in a letter last December to the US Comptroller General, 21 leading US House members requested the Government Accountability Office to conduct a formal study examining the federal regulation um, of advertising practices for prescription metal medical devices. So the letter specifically noted contact lenses and cited the New York Times article that AOA collaborated with detailing how Hubble had taken advantage of, um, of federal regulations. So lawmakers' concerns in the communication echoed many of the health and safety worries that the AOA has always had and always will have. Um, media and consumer advocacy groups had highlighted for years with DTC prescription medical devices. So um, we had a lot of data. We had a lot of information to share with the people that needed to hear it. Thank goodness for that. You know, you, you guys hung in there for a long time with this. And it seems from what we've learned so far that it must've been a very frustrating effort, especially when they, they didn't want to listen to you. So kudos to you. Um, Bob, can you tell us about the call that two dozen members of Congress participated on, is that right? They were just trying to get the word to the Comptroller General that this was a, uh, a, a, they were blatantly breaking the law and nobody was doing anything about it. So we went to our leaders in Congress that were supporters of their patient safety interests, trying to look out for the public, and they just tried to call the, uh, F, or the uh, Hubble people out on the carpet to say, you can't keep doing this. Wow, that's why I always tell 
uh, ODs and young ODs, people I lecture to, that if you have any legislators that are patients to casually during the conversation in the exam room, let them know who you are, what you do, what your capabilities are as an optometrist, and the challenges you're up against that are not in the best interest of your patients. Uh, that, that can pay off when they can learn it before they get in that situation. Fortunately, we have the AOA to help us connect with those legislators and make these arguments for us, but every, every little bit helps. Absolutely. Jack, Jackie, what did AOA do to try and spotlight that the practices Hubble were using, Hubble was using? So in addition to talking about it and, and dialoguing with the FDC and other government regulators on a very regular, very persistent basis, um, we engaged with the media and um, advocating for patient safety. Two national publications, one called Quartz and of course the U New York Times, which we all have heard of, featured stories about Hubble's um, business practices and how sideways they were and how blatantly illegal they were. So we worked with each of them to reinforce the subversive, frankly, tactics that Hubble was employing. And the reporters themselves validated that independently through their investigation. So um, it was very powerful to be able to get the message out like that. Was there a moment there, Jackie, where, where you saw things turn around, where finally people resonated with the message that we were trying to get across? Um, well, the, the call that the um, legislators got to actually listen to, the, you know, that robocall, but, you know, in, in situations like this, a turning point is difficult because it's been five years. And, um, you know, during that time, we had administrative administration change. And so FTC commissioners change. And so um, it would be nice to point to a aha moment, but it's persistence and it's organizations working together and it's just keeping um, keeping the thumb screws on that really ends up resulting in a good outcome sometimes. For sure. For sure. I'm sure it's not the end of it either. Bob, what should doctors do if they see bad actors or new bad actors or even old ones in the marketplace? They can report any kind of uh, bad behavior to stop illegal CLs at AOA.org. So again, it's stop illegal CLs at AOA.org. And I want to emphasize that these doctor reports went a long way in giving us evidence and firm commitment from uh, FTC people that they couldn't refute. You know, the, listening to one of those illegible or unintelligible recordings was was just a, kind of a damning evidence that they, they had no response to. So we make a difference when we report these things to the FTC and the Department of Justice, and they recognize how significant these violations are when they affect people's eyes and cause them financial distress, paying for office visits and being inconvenienced, all from an illegal tactic. And that's what they're supposed to watch out for anyway. So it really can make a difference if all the doctors would report every single event that they notice. A lot of myself included, I don't under, I, $3.5 million sounds like a lot of money, but in a vacuum, I don't know, we don't know what Hubble's revenues are. Is this more than a slap on the wrist that is going to keep them from, from doing it again? Or is this amount to a slap on the wrist? I know it's precedent setting, but just can you comment on that? Either I would say that it's my impression that they have unlimited venture capital money. Other people's money are funding their venture. And this is minimal. I'm sure that it's, it doesn't bother them a bit. It doesn't slow them down at all. What can slow them down is the cease and desist order that they had to comply with the regulations with oversight, where somebody's looking over their shoulder now all the time to make sure they follow the rule of the law. They didn't want that. Jackie, what, what can we take away from this ruling? And what is AOA doing to hold others accountable because of it? So in, uh, although it, it might be that $3.5 million doesn't shut them down, it certainly shines a spotlight on this bad behavior. And so this action should be a warning to other online retailers who attempt to um, thwart patient safety and, and who attempt to interrupt the doctor-patient relationship, um, that, that it might not be an instant hammer, but the persistence pays off and, and right um, will win sometimes. And so we're, we're hopeful that this will cause other retailers to fall in line and follow the rules as well, because Hubble is not the only one um, who, who um, 
who has these these behaviors and, and we all know it. Uh, so there's a lot of work yet to be done um, to continue to protect patients' eye health, and we're certainly fully committed to continuing that mission. Um, but but everybody's input matters, doctors' input matters. You know, throughout the timeline of this event, um, there were a couple, a dozen, several dozen, maybe doctors who did go to the website, the Stop Illegal CLS. Um, website to report. I'll bet for every one of those, though, there were hundreds of doctor complaints and concerns. And so um, this just is, look what we were able to accomplish with a little bit of input and with more input from doctors who are um, seeing their patients' lives being um, interrupted by these sorts of practices. You know, imagine what we could do if more of us reported more often. Yeah, absolutely. And hopefully this video will go to a long way towards achieving that. I have one more question I'm going to ask Bob and then we'll wrap up. But can you talk about the uh, the National Consumers League uh, and their role in this? Sure, I, I, I wasn't familiar with that organization, but it sounds like they had a significant role here. They have been a real long-term partner with us in protecting patient health and advocating in Congress and federal regulators to crack down on the companies that are deceptively marketing directly to consumers these medical devices and illegally substituting contact lenses when they shouldn't be. NCL has been a vocal partner with AOA and the Healthcare Alliance for Patient Safety. And I wanted to explain the Alliance for Patient Safety has conducted nonstop steadfast pro-patient advocacy. And it's an organization consisting of doctor and industry organizations of AOA, Johnson Johnson Vision, Essilor America, and other leaders, Cooper Vision and Elkon are also active in this organization. And they would like to see the rule of law enforced and do what's best for consumers. They had a voice with Congress and we were allies with them in this. Wow, fantastic. Well, um, you know, thank, thanks to our allies, thanks to the, the companies that support us and in return, well, that we support each other like the ones you mentioned. Uh, right. I'd like to encourage everyone watching to support the AOA, uh, not just the contact lens advocacy, but definitely definitely that. Better documentation of illegal contact lens sales helps the AOA build a case for increased enforcement by federal regulators, such as the FTC and FDA and the other ones that Bob mentioned. And if you're interested in an even more direct role in combating illegal contact lens sales, consider joining the AOA contact lens and cornea section. And I want to thank uh, Bob and Jackie for taking the time out of their busy day to do this. I know you take a lot of time out of your busy life to do this. And we appreciate everything you do for the, for the profession in terms of volunteering to do this, taking time away from your practices and your families. And, and we also appreciate everything the AOA does that, that they can't signal that they're doing so that we get to the point where we actually make this kind of progress. So kudos to you and thanks for all your hard work. Hey, Alan, I'd like to thank you for being a voice for optometry and encouraging students and doctors to completely understand what is impacting their practices and to get involved in AOA, help their practices succeed, and ultimately make better patient care happen in our, our country. Thank you for your part of that. My pleasure. The most important thing any of us can do. Uh, we always, if we, I always tell people when I wrap these talks up that if you're not the kind of person that contribute time, AOA needs money to, for these efforts. If you're not the kind of person that contributes money, contribute time, or if you can, do both. And, and let's help make our profession stronger that way. So thank you all and have a great night. Thank you, Alan. Good night. Thanks for Good night. my pleasure.